What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week, give you the past seven days of tech news videos in one single video. In this video, we talk a lot about people's Galaxy S23s arriving, getting shipped out, where they are, what the status is of them, have they been delayed or not. We talk about One UI 5.1. We talk about the Galaxy S22 phones, the Galaxy Z Flip 4 and Fold 4, and so much more. Look at a rhyme right there. So enjoy this week's episode, and we'll see you in the next one. We've been talking about the Galaxy S23 Ultra for a long time now, months now, and one of the things about it is that the display is basically the same as it has been the last year or two. It hasn't really changed all that much. It's a little tweaked this year, but it's basically the same display we've got in the last couple of years from the 21 Ultra to the 22 Ultra. And one of the big things on there is brightness and quality of it. And obviously the iPhone actually has a brighter display and it has a better display at that. Even though Samsung makes the display for the iPhone, Samsung didn't use the same display in the 14 Pro Max for iPhone that they did on the S22 Ultra or S23 Ultra, I should say. So here's this going out. So next year's iPhone, the 15 Pro slash Ultra, whatever they end up calling it, is in development using Samsung's M13 panel. Meanwhile, the Samsung S23 still uses the M11 panel debuted on actually the S21 Ultra. He goes in and fixes it in another tweet. So it says S22 Ultra, but it's actually S21 Ultra and reused on the S22 Ultra and plus. So basically current Samsung's flagships are two generations older than Apple's. This is another WTF moment of why. Why is Apple, and Apple's phone is basically the same price, if not cheaper in some regards, than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So the iPhone is cheaper or the same price, has better, better and brighter display than Samsung's. And it's not like they're cutting out somewhere else per, per se. I mean, it still charges fairly fast. They slow it down within software to keep, to long, to keep the battery longer. Uh, the, 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 what else? The, 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 the power of the, 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 the phone is very powerful. Basically the same powerful, uh, power as the S22, S23 Ultra beats it in some regards, especially in the CPU category. So I was like, dude, what is going on here? Why are we two freaking generations behind, about to be two generations behind versus Apple? And you're giving them your damn best of the best and not using it for your own. How can't we be upset and like want to like be like, dude, what the frig is going on here? Why is Samsung not giving their flagship phones the best that they have to offer? They're giving it to their competitors. And it's not like, like I said, it's not like the competitors phones are super and uh, uh, hugely more ex expensive. They're not, they are not at all. The biggest story of the day before I get to the meat of this uh, video is the OnePlus had an event and the biggest takeaway for me anyway was the OnePlus pad, which is their new tablet coming out. It will be up for pre-order and release in April of 2023. But what about like the specs and pretty much everything about it? Well, the information that's officially come out about it is it's going to be called the OnePlus pad. It's going to have a seven by five aspect ratio with 11.6 inch display, 144 hertz display at that so it's going to be great for gaming super high refresh rate on there i think it's the highest refresh rate on a tablet right now uh, android side 2800 by 2000 uh, resolution which is a super high resolution display it's got that dimensity 9000 chipset and that chipset from mediatek is equal basically to uh, or if not better in a lot of ways to the 8 gen 1 processor so super uh, powerful processor 12 gigabytes of ram 95 10 milliamp battery 67 watt charging so this can charge from 1 to 90 percent in one hour and additional accessories such as a stylus uh, and a keyboard and it's going to be pretty nice looking you can see his little image from the event on kind of what they announced for it. And I love the keyboard. The keyboard to me looks exactly like the Mac uh, iPad one. And that is a great, great keyboard. This one looks really similar to that. Looks like it's gonna stand up in any situation of be on a bed, your stomach, your chest, a table, anything. It looks great. Can't wait for this tablet. It will be coming out in a lot of countries, including the US, India, and others. First story 
of the day is a feature that's new to the Galaxy S23 phones in the gallery app. And this is gonna make it so that you can see things better in your photo. So the latest information that's coming out and Sam Mobile's reporting this is that the S23 Ultra lets you zoom in to slightly higher levels in the gallery app, which means that when you take, for instance, a 200 megapixel photo and you pinch in to zoom into it after, you know, in the gallery app, you'll actually see more detail than you could on say the S22 Ultra. So if you love zooming in and seeing a little bit more detail in your photos, you will now be able to on the Galaxy, like I said, the Galaxy S23 Ultra in the gallery app, the official gallery app that Samsung gives you. I can see myself kind of potentially, you know, taking hold of that. Um, I do like the gallery app actually, um, not so much for, um, more for zooming in and stuff. I love zooming into my videos and stuff like that. It's always been that as a feature, so that's a really cool thing. I'm much looking forward to this. What about you guys? Next up is, we've been talking about here in the US, FedEx, Samsung working together obviously to ship out the Galaxy S23 series of phones. Now I wanna, I wanna say, uh, I checked my order and my friend checked his order. Ours hasn't gone out yet. Um, we have our tracking numbers, we have our delivery dates, but it hasn't made any movement. But we're not everybody. It looks like there is movement for some people's orders ordered from Samsung, um, they live in the United States, and shipments are starting to roll out here in the US. I know some other countries, you guys already have it, but here in the US, most people don't have it. So this is great news. It's starting to roll out. Uh, my delivery date is the 13th, as is almost everybody else's that order directly through samsung.com. And this guy's is as well, it's still uh, September, thir uh, <laughs> February 13th. No, sorry. Yeah, February 13th, delivery date. But it's just showing some movement, which is great, great news, which means it's well on its way to his house. What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. How is everyone doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day. We've got two stories, one questions. Let's go. First story of the day has to do with the Galaxy S23 Ultra and turning on light mode. Remember, light mode is in the settings and what it does is it reduces the amount of power that the phone uses, but in turn it gives you better battery life and better optimization of, you know, sipping at that battery. So someone, here they go, little tweet here, Golden Retriever had did a little uh, performance test of the S23 Ultra on light mode versus light mode off. And you can see from his comment right here, he says, but in reality, it's a mere gimmick, saying that the extra performance is a mere gimmick. Light performance mode is the best feature recently added to One UI. You give up 10% speed, but you gain 40% or you lose, you, you reduce your power consumption by 40% and you gain 50% efficiency. And you can see when we look at this, on the top, you can see the scores here and how much power is being used and all of that. And you can see that the light mode on the SD8 Gen 2 light mode is only, the score is only five points less than the full 8 Gen 2 Plus that you'd get on the regular S23 Ultra. The average watt per power is down 4.9 versus 2.97. Efficiency is up to 18.56 versus 12.42. And then the performance gigahertz uh, is also up versus 1941 versus 1811. So kind of really nice to be able to turn that on. And it's been on other phones as well, don't get me wrong. I personally don't really use it. I, I feel like when I use it, I do notice a bit of a difference. And even though he, it's supposedly only 10% in these charts on these benchmarks, for me, I feel a difference. I don't know about you guys, but let me know if you always use light mode or you don't. Let me know in the comments down below. And a little bit of good news, if you have an S22 phone, it looks like One UI 5.1 and the features that it has on it, the newer features, are gonna be coming to you very, very soon. Maybe even in the next update because uh, Rida has put out a little tweet saying, looks like One UI 5.1 will be rolling out to the S22 line. Super excited, although I'll likely have my S23 Ultra before then. And you look at the little graphic, it shows that new features, S23, S22, One UI 5.1, and then, because it's based off the camera assistant app, it says, that, and there's an update out for it, added picture softening step, added, 
capture step step and timer multi photo option. So again, if you have an S22 phone, One UI 5.1 and all the features that are brought to the S23 phones will trickle down to you guys. Without a doubt, you'll get it, but it, now it's looking like it's gonna happen pretty freaking soon. What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. How is everyone doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day. We got a few news stories for you and a couple of questions, so let's go. Our first story of the day is, if you have the Galaxy Watch 5, there is an update that's just been pushed out. 100 megs, go pick it up. It is system stability and reliability. So uh, again, just go in there to the watch app on your phone and you should be able to download that or even the watch uh, settings on your phone. Next up, if you get a Galaxy S23 Ultra and you take the S Pen out of your Galaxy S23 Ultra and you try to put it in backwards, you actually can. So don't be concerned, it will not damage your phone. You can see from Sam Mobile saying that the S Pen can be inserted backwards without any damage. So if you're a wild and crazy kind of person, you can do that. Just push it all the way in and you'll be safe. You don't have to worry about it. There was, I forget what phone it was. Was it the note? It was one of the notes and you put it in, if you put the, the pen in backwards, it broke your, you couldn't get it out. You'd have to like get it, send it in for service. Um, but that's not the case with the guest 23 Ultra. So if you mistakenly put it in backwards, you're still good. Next up is a pretty cool story. Now I have the Fold version of this phone, and that's the Oppo Find N2 Fold. But what about the Oppo Find N2 Flip? Because both those phones were released in China already. But what about worldwide, Mr. Worldwide? Well, bad news, Fold still not coming out as of right now worldwide, but the Flip is. So if you've been looking for a alternative to the Galaxy Fold, or Galaxy Z Flip, I should say, the Oppo Find N2 Flip is coming next week, and it's a global launch. So basically, the Oppo Find N2 will launch on February 15th. The event will place, take place in London at 2.30 p.m. GMT. We expect the N2 Flip to be a heavy competition against Samsung's similar Z Flip. And remember, some of the specs of the Oppo Find N2 Flip are a 6.8 inch display with a 3.26 inch outside display, which is way bigger than the 1.9 inch Samsung display. 4,300 milliamp battery, which is bigger. Android 13, 50 megapixel camera and an eight megapixel ultra wide, most likely costing 1200 bucks, maybe a little more, a little less. We'll see what it comes out at. Uh, our only story of the day is a heads up. If you're expecting your Samsung Galaxy S23 series phone to arrive on the 13th of February, which is this coming Monday, there's a chance that it may not. Now, this is not affecting everybody. I will admit it's not affecting me. It's not affecting some of my friends that I know that are also getting the phone on the 13th, but it is affecting some of you. Some of you reached out to me. I know uh, one of the big Twitter guys happened to him too. Their delivery dates went from the 13th or 14th of February, and it says is now being held by FedEx for delivery until the 15th. So some people, and this might change for everybody, um, it hasn't changed for me right now, like I said, but it's looking like some people, if not everyone that have ordered it from Samsung, are getting their deliveries delayed until February 15th. Again, some so far. And I, when I say some, I'm meaning not the majority. So. I don't know why some of them, it says like, it says like, I don't have a screenshot. I was waiting to get a screenshot from somebody, but I didn't get it in time. But a few people have reached out to me. 15th is being held for it. I, I, the only thing I can think of is why it's being held is maybe it's some kind of contractual thing they have um, with themselves, Samsung, and saying that like, oh, the phone's not released yet. We're going to wait a few days. And I know there's people in America that have ordered through their carriers that have received their phone. Internationally, I know people have received the phone even last week. Um, and so it's, it's like, come on, what are you holding the damn phone for? It's really crazy. Um, so be forewarned, this, mine might change too. It wouldn't even surprise me at this point, but right now, a lot of people still says February 13th that ordered directly from Samsung, but then there are some that say it's being held until February 15th for delivery. So keep your eyes peeled. Check the FedEx website, um, fedex.com. Create an account if you didn't already, and you can check your advanced shipment tra tracking and look at regular tracking for any packages you have coming from FedEx so you can keep a hold of what's going on. Mine's just left Texas. It, it doesn't say where it is right now, but it says it left Texas last night. 
So I'll let you guys know what goes on with mine. Our first story of the day is about when One UI 5.1 is going to hit Galaxy S22 series of phones and Galaxy Z Flip 4 and Fold 4 devices as well. Looks like the information coming out is AKA super soon, guys. I'm talking about 10 days from now. According to Fido's update schedule, the S22, S22 Plus, S22 Ultra, Galaxy Z Fold 4, Flip 4 are scheduled to get the February security patch on February 22nd, as well as One UI 5.1. One, they've updated their list to share this information earlier. So you can see down below the, in bold, you see we're going to be getting those updates and the 5.1 update as well. That brings along with it lots of new stuff to these phones. You know, there's camera things, there's gallery updates that are gonna be really cool. We can take out little things from a picture really easily. Um, there's photo and video editing updates, customization and expressiveness, AR and uh, zones and emojis and all kinds of other really really cool stuff that will hit 5.1 and a couple of things about this one February 22nd comes around I will get guess there's gonna be tons of us that don't get the update don't forget when even though they're pushing the update out there's a really good chance that people especially here in America aren't or maybe not going to get this until maybe March why? Because it has to go through the carrier approval. It has to go through Samsung giving it to the carrier. It has to, uh, there's, uh, there's like middlemen. So it has to go through all those middlemen. The other part of this is that when you do get the update, it is coming obviously, like I said, to those older phones, which are gonna put it software wise in line with the S23 phones. Now the S23 phones, that might be a major point. You'd be like, oh, they have the newest software, but a couple of weeks later, a week later after you, those the S23 phones come out, your phone will have all this new software too, so it'll feel kind of new. It'll give you some of those features that were exclusively only for a short time on the S23 series phones, and then they're coming over to the S22s and the flips and the fold as well. So very cool stuff. Just again, in a couple of weeks here, time that you should be getting that update. Your question of the day is, do you, wait when you get an update to like see what people say about it or do you try to get it as fast as you can when it comes out for your phone are you worried you might get a a bug that's you know annoying let me know your thoughts i generally just download it and update it unless i see something online that's like hey don't do this update otherwise i usually just do it let me know about you guys in the comments down below without further ado let's get into our q a goon squad asks when a company sends you a phone to review how long do you get to keep it before you have to send it back and also what happens if you don't send the device back to the company so with phones literally i don't know if there's been a phone where i had to send it back almost every phone i get i would say basically almost 100 percent I get to keep it. Um, that's one of the perks of doing what I get to do is that when someone sends me something, I get to keep it. Um, the only companies that generally want stuff back, at least for stuff that I get, is televisions occasionally, but there's only one company that generally asks for the television back. Anything else, if someone asks for it back, I generally say I'm not gonna review it. Um, I, I think if I'm promoting or reviewing or doing anything with videos on that product, I think it's, one of the perks of doing what I do is we should be able to keep it because we're, you know, putting we're giving you guys free press. You're, or sometimes they pay us, but generally it's free press uh, unless it's a, a sponsored video, and that should be one of the perks. You get to keep it because you put your hard-earned time into that video, and you're promoting it or talking bad or whatever the reason or what kind of video is with that. Um, if you don't send it back to the company, if you don't have a contract with the company, they can't do anything. Um, so if I didn't sign something saying I wouldn't send, I would send it back, and I didn't, uh, I won't get in trouble. They just probably wouldn't work with me again. If I did send a, sign a contract and I didn't send it back, they could theoretically sue me um, for the the cost of the product. And then yeah, that's probably about the worst that would happen. And even then they probably wouldn't sue me. They probably just wouldn't work with me as my guess. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the hashtag question. We'll see you down the road.